Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. Hey, do not forget, Predators Pilgrim Weekend, July 9th through 11th, as I announced yesterday, it will be a virtual seminar, and we want you to tune in. There will there There's a, a link on donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com for you, or you uh, when the time comes, July the 9th. All you have to do is click on it. You'll be able to watch the videos. Uh, each of my speakers has done a great job of, do, of producing videos. Uh, I will say this, you know, some of them have done such a slick professional job uh, that it really is kind of embarrassing to me because uh, I didn't do that slick and professional a job. I just preached. Okay. Uh, but look, I really, really appreciate their expertise. So uh, be sure to watch that. Another announcement. Uh, I, am, I am officially terminating... My review of the book by Lance Conley entitled Hope Resurrected. You know, in my last review of, of his book, I pointed out that he had just grossly, flagrantly, blatantly, and purposely left out significant portions of passages from my book, chapters, quotes, sentences of my book, in order to give the entirely wrong impression of what I was saying. He even added words to my supposed quotes. I I'm sorry, folks, this is blatant dishonesty. Now, Mr. Connolly's been caught in many, many lies on Facebook before. Uh, there are men who have caught him in open-faced, blatant lies. He has never apologized. He just continues to ramp up his absolutely horrific accusations. In response to me catching him perverting the wording of my books, he sent me, as I've shared with you, one of the most hate-filled, obscene, vulgar posts with desires for my death included. Now, I want you to catch the power of that, okay? Uh, here's a young guy that supposedly is, is a Christian. And yet he expressed the desire for me to hang uh, a millstone around my head, around my neck, and go jump in a lake and never come up. Yeah, that's real Christian, isn't it? And so I'm literally not going to give Mr. Conley another moment of my time beyond what I'm saying to you right here. I'm not going to review any more of his book. I've already exposed the fallacy of it sufficiently. And I know and understand that probably he will get, uh, when, it, when he's told about me terminating the review, uh, he will get on his own little blog and boast and brag that he drove Preston from the field. Well, as I've said on many, many occasions, I have no interest or desire or willingness to engage in any kind of dialogue with people as corrupt, as vile, as violent. I mean, he said many times he would just like to slap me right upside the head. And so I have no desire, I have no intent, I have no willingness to continue to give Mr. Conley and his corrupt book one more moment of my time. That's all I'll say on that at the moment. Uh, you know, if something comes up that I need to do something, perhaps. But at this time, we're done. So here's what I want you to do. If you have a recommendation for a book, uh, an article perhaps, written by someone who is an anti-preterist, and you'd like for me to review and refute it, if you want me to consider it, uh, here on my, uh, you know, on my Friday uh, segments, then send me a private message or post it, you know, on YouTube. Doesn't matter to me. But uh, there are some books who who are that are written by men of equal character as Mr. Conley. I have one particular in mind. No, I will not consider it, and I've said so because the, that individual has the same vile character and characteristics as Mr. Conley. 
But I will consider other suggestions by you for works that you would like me uh, to consider. I, there's one book uh, by a man by the name of Ellis. I believe it's Paul Ellis, if I'm not mistaken. I've had the book laying here on my desk for a good little while. I'll have to go back and look at it. But Again, give me your suggestions. All right. Well, boy, I've already taken up five minutes here with preliminaries. We have been continuing to look at Jesus' use of the language of the Jewish feast days in Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels, not the Son, but the Father only. And I've been sharing with you that what we have here is Jesus who was raised as a Jew went to the temple, observed the feast days, who taught based upon the feast days. Look, I got to tell you, you've got to realize how powerfully, <coughs> pardon me, Jesus uses festal language, imagery in the Gospel of John. Go to William Bell's site, allthingsfulfilled.com, and look up my lesson at the Memphis Lectureship in 2016, I think it's 2016, in which I spoke on John chapter 7, 6 and 7, and Jesus' incorporation of the Jewish festal imagery. Powerful, powerful stuff. Okay, so, I mean, wow, I'm really out of time. So, what I'm going to do, uh, I think I've said sufficient about 1 Corinthians 15, sharing with you that Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 has reference to all three of the last of Israel's feast days. Now, I've just got to reiterate this, folks. This is so important. Here is Paul, faithful Jew, who taught nothing but the hope of Israel. His eschatology was nothing but the hope of Israel. And he tells us in Colossians chapter 2, 16, that the law, including the feast days, were still a shadow of the good things about to come. And that was when he wrote in approximately 62. I'm sorry, you can't avoid the Greek tenses in Colossians 2. They're just there. And Paul was saying, that the last three, most assuredly Rosh Hashanah, had not yet been fulfilled. Notice one more time, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52, which I barely mentioned yesterday. Paul said, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But what? At the last trumpet, the dead would arise. Wait a minute. What was Rosh Hashanah called? It was the sounding of the shofar. It was the last trumpet. It was the time of the resurrection. So here is Paul referring to the Jewish feast day and the sounding of the last trumpet for the resurrection in fulfillment of Israel's last three feast days. So the question therefore becomes, are you and I, just because we are 2,000 years removed from the what the German scholars call the Zetzenleben, the life situation, of the first century writers. Just because you and I are 2,000 years removed from the temple, the priesthood, the sacrifices, the feast days, just because you and I are 2,000 years removed from those things, does that mean that those things play no proper part in the interpretation of the New Testament written by Jews with the possible exception of Luke. But even Luke wrote about Jewish promises and the fulfillment of Israel's eschatology. Pardon me. Listen, folks, 
in the New Testament, I want you to listen very carefully. Somebody wants to pervert this. I know this. There is no distinctly and exclusively Gentile eschatology in the New Testament. It is first and foremost the fulfillment of Israel's promises, and when Israel's promises were fulfilled, that salvation would flow to the nations. That was always God's plan. And guess what? This is why that final feast day, Sukkot, was called the joy of the nations. Because on Sukkot, sacrifices were offered, not just for Israel, but for all the nations of the world. And thus, Israel's feast days consummated, fulfilled, which would bring the joy of the nations. Salvation would flow to anyone and to everyone willing to accept the Lord Jesus, the Christ. Well, I'm out of time. Okay, I won't have a video tomorrow because I'm going to wait for your suggestions on which book, which article you would like for me to respond to. Maybe it's a YouTube video, okay, that someone has made attacking covenant eschatology. That's okay, too. Uh, by the way, uh, Mike Sullivan and I are still waiting for James White to respond to our challenge to meet him and Jeff Durbin in formal public debate on eschatology. I'd love nothing better. And you know what? It thought just occurred to me. I think what I'm going to do, it'll be a week from Friday, a week from tomorrow, but I'll do it a week from tomorrow. I'm going to review Dr. James White's review of my recent debate with Sam Frost. That's what I'm going to do next, but it'll be a week from tomorrow. So be looking forward to that. Don't fail to watch. In the meantime, you have a fantastic weekend. Please be safe. See you on Monday.